friends, and welcome to The Secret Podcast on Service of Change Radio, where we challenge reality, question that which we've been taught, and hope to inspire a new direction of thought to bring about change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II with Service of Change. I have a very, very interesting and important show to get into tonight. We're talking about the apparent detection via a new telescope with concave lenses of otherwise invisible terrestrial entities. That's the title of a paper. Uh, by Thunder Corps, Thunder Energies Corporation. They have discovered invisible life. It's uh, a pretty exciting find. If in fact this is legit, um, you know th- this could this could stand to uh, really make a big change for those of us that have been doing research into this field. I'm going to get into that uh, pretty much for the the entire show today. Another big news that that hit the mainstream about a week ago: the discovery of another planet, a tenth planet out. In our solar system, uh, it, it, it's way, 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 way out there. I think they said it has something like a 20,000-year orbit out there. That is a, something that I'm tracking as well. And uh, I just confirmed last night we're going to have Ray Davis, the author of Anunnaki Awakening, who's uh, who's got a lot of information on these types of subjects based on his research on uh, planet Nibiru and things of that nature. He's going to be coming on the show. I'm looking at next week to have that episode aired for you. So uh, definitely mark your calendars, check your newsletters, because um, so, we'll have uh, an excerpt on that and, and the links to his interview at, that promises to be a uh, an exciting and informative discussion with uh, with my friend Ray. So please look for that. If you haven't done so already, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this a lot during this interview during this discussion tonight. Sign up for the secret newsletter, please. You can go to servicechange.com.com. Just click the newsletter link, and you can sign up right there. Or you can you know, go to servicechange.com slash I am human and start reading I am human and we are not who we think we are for free uh, right there. Um, you know, And then I'll ask that you just uh, provide your email address. After a few clicks, you get prompted for that. But uh, please check it out. Uh, I'd love to have you as a reader and I'd love to hear your feedback because this stuff that we're talking about is very, very important. So uh, I'm very excited about this, this finding, this article that came out, but I'm trying very hard to reserve my excitement because sometimes if something's too good to be true, uh, it usually is. And this, this, if, if this is, in fact, something that's legitimate, um, for my research, it's somewhat of a smoking gun. Um, but I don't want to get too behind these claims yet uh, until I can find out a little bit more about it. But I want to talk about it because I am excited about the potential uh, that this that this offers. Um, you, you know, in, in my research, ultimately, one of the, the things that I'm set out to try to, to, um, to prove or that one of my hypotheses in my book, Food for the Archons, is that a, a parasite exists that is invisible to the human eye. Uh, and this parasite has influence over human behavior, and it feeds off of the energy that people put out. Um, now, I've done a lot of research in uh, in this book that that talks about and has the proof that yes, humans do give off different levels of energy based on different emotions that they're uh, that they're feeling and perceiving. So that is being given off, um, and, and I have different types of testimony and, um, and and data that suggests that these entities do exist, but nothing that is mainstream science accepted yet. It doesn't mean, it, you know, there's not some good stuff out there about these entities, but nothing where the, you know, the, the mainstream 
media is going to be comfortable saying, hey, these guys exist. This article that just came out was dated January 19th in the press release. The study was dated, I want to say, December 2015. Yep. And it was published in the American Journal of Modern Physics, special issue, issue two, Foundations of Hardronic Mechanics. So, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to check it out, uh, that's where you can go. I'll have the links to this at, at the show notes on serviceofchange.com. But what, what they're saying is that they invented a new type of lens in an attempt to study antimatter uh, or, or dark matter. Now, antimatter is, is basically the opposite of matter, and it's un- unseeable. Uh, by the human eye, by anything that we have that can detect, uh, that that can detect anything, we can't see this stuff. Based on, and I'm not a physicist, so my apologies for the layman's terms, but based on calculations of the size of the universe, the mass of the seeable universe, the mass doesn't add up. There's more mass than we can see. So they have what's called dark matter or antimatter, and maybe I'm confusing the two terms. Maybe they're two different things. My point is there's stuff out there that we know exists based on measurements that we can't yet see or, or determine what it is. So now with this, um, Thunder, Cor- Thunder Energies Corporation uh, is, is stating is that, let's see, let's read the abstract. By using telescopes with concave lenses known as Santilli telescopes, trademark and patent pending by the U.S. publicly traded company Thunder Energies Corporation, we review preceding evidence for the apparent existence of antimatter galaxies, antimatter asteroids, and antimatter cosmic rays. Independently from these astrophysical detections, we present for the first time evidence for the apparent existence of entities in our terrestrial environment that are solely visible via telescopes with concave lenses, while being invisible to our eyes and to conventional Galileo telescopes with convex lenses which entities leave dark images in the background of digital cameras attached to the Santilli telescopes. These entities here are called invisible terrestrial entities of the first kind, ITE-1, or dark ITE, when the present, also for the first time, evidence for the apparent existence of our terrestrial environment of additional entities that are also visible to telescopes with concave lenses while being invisible to our eyes and the conventional telescopes with the convex lenses, which entities leave bright images while in the background of digital cameras. These additional entities are here called invisible terrestrial entities of the second kind, ITE2, or bright ITE. It is pointed out that both types of entities generally move in the night sky over sensitive areas, and their behavior generally suggests unauthorized surveillance. This paper has been motivated by the significance and diversification of the collected evidence, as well as available independent confirmations that warrant systematic inspections of the sky over our sensitive civilian, industrial, and military installations via telescopes with concave lenses, so as to detect possible unauthorized surveillance. So, wow. What they're saying is, n- number one, I, I have to say, I-, I like that the claim is not that this is alien. Um, that seems to be a go-to a lot, that, oh, I don't understand it, it's up in the sky, it's got to be alien. We don't know. I-, I like the fact that their go-to is terrestrial. Now, I- I- based on what I read, I don't know that we have enough information to determine the origins of these things, but I'm I'm happy sticking with terrestrial for now until we can prove a little bit more about these things, if they if they even exist, um, you know, and, and the pictures look like like blobs of light or blobs of uh, blackness among the light, um, and they're saying that they're hanging out over military installations and sensitive facilities. But I I don't know, you know, is that proof that they're conducting surveillance? Not necessarily for me as an analyst, I wouldn't make that that statement that hey, these things are conducting surveillance because we don't know what kind of information they're gathering. We don't know if they're gathering information. There may be types of equipment over there over these sensitive installations that act as an energy source for these beings, and they might be drawn to it uh, based on that reasoning alone. So, um, based on the information I have, we can't. I don't think we can make the claim that they are conducting surveillance over military and government installations. It could be a whole variety of reasons. Again, one being maybe there's particular high amounts of computer energy output that draws them there. 
uh, because those installations tend to be very hardwired with a lot of different technical stuff. So maybe there's a signal out there that's drawing them over these installations. could be a whole variety of things. Maybe these things are a byproduct of whatever they're housing at these military installations, and it's just causing some kind of interference that is detectable by these um, by these telescopes. And um, th these are all the questions that I have. These are all the studies that I think need to be done, and maybe they have be done, been done, but I, I just I just don't know yet. So I want to jump behind and say, yes, there's entities and they're invisible, and yesterday I was. I was very, very excited about this, and I've had some time to think about it and process it uh, a, a little bit more. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know enough yet. So I am excited about this finding, and I want to know more about this finding. I'm going to reach out to the company this week and see if I can speak with somebody from their uh, from their PR department who can tell me a little bit more and hopefully answer some of these questions. But let me let me enjoy this for a minute and just say if if this is actually what it is, if these are invisible entities, this really really opens things up here as, as what I've been saying uh, you know in my books that people who have experienced it people who you know um, are able to to um, feel the presence of other energies in the area you know they know that there's something more out there they know that as my book says I'm human and there's more to us than we realize um, but this gives us such a powerful tool and it's not saying that these entities are the entities that I refer to as the archons or the energy parasites in my books. Um, but this gives us hope that maybe someday we'll be able to detect them. Uh, and if we can detect them, we can study them and we can understand them and we can see what it is that they're doing and, and how they're influencing human behavior. Um, you know, I, I remember, you know, in, in my research, I came across that, you know, through the discovery of the microscope, they, they eventually discovered, I, can't, I don't have the names in front of me, but they discovered the germ. Uh, and they said, okay, wow, we have microscopic organisms that are down there, but that was where it was left right then. There. They didn't know anything about them. I think it was something like 50 to 100 years later when somebody says, hey, germs are causing diseases. And people didn't believe them at first. Hey, these invisible, tiny little creatures are making humans sick. They didn't believe that at all. Um, so it took a while and, and some study and some convincing for that to happen. And, and what I propose is that, um, that these things act as parasites that uh, influence the electromagnetic signals that are coming in and out of our, our hearts and our brains, which those signals have been scientifically verified through the Institute of Heart Math. I think that these things influence those because of the output that it then creates from our bodies, the energy that is then released from us when we're in a state of de depression or panic or fear or sadness or loneliness. Um, so, you know, and I think, you know, that can change the way we look at mental illness. We, it'll change the way we look at depression and sadness. Um, you know, and, and it just, it just opens up a lot of possibilities for us for understanding some of the other influences of human behavior. And that was the exploration I took in I am human and we're not who we think we are and talking about you know, my fish in the fish tank and how, um, you know, if I change the pH level, it's going to, it's going to affect their level of aggression. If I change the temperature or the type of food that I'm giving them, it's going to influence them to mate or cause them to be lazy. They have no idea that I'm sitting there changing these things that they can't see, but it affects their behavior. So what is out there that affects our behavior? Some of it may be conscious things. Some of it is simply, you know, studies are also showing now that the electromagnetic output of the sun uh, is is a influencing human behavior. There's other studies that have come out that have that have shown that based on uh, you know sun cycles and solar flares. That there's a, re a, a actual measurable impact on human behavior with that stuff. So what I'm saying is there's invisible stuff out there that does have an influence on human behavior. Are these things that have been detected a representation of those things that are influencing human behavior? I don't know at this point. But, you know, I find it interesting that when you look at the pictures that was released by, by this corporation, is they look like black blobs. The dark entity, entity number one, looks like black blobs that are just floating through the sky. Now, when you read Carlos Castaneda's book, The Active Side of Infinity, and I've referenced this book before, it, you know, it's an important book to read if you're exploring this possibility. Yeah, um, you know, Carlos Castaneda wrote about seven books talking about his experience with uh, and 
and the teachings of Don Juan Mattis, who was a, a Yaqui Indian shaman. And in the last book, he talks to him about these parasites that I'm referring to. And at one point, he sees them. He, and, and Castaneda describes what he's seeing. And he says, um, he called them mud shadows. He said it looked like a black blob that was just bouncing around. It would jump silently and land with a silent thud. Um, mirrors what you're seeing on this picture. Now, again, a blob is a blob is a blob, so it could be anything, you know. But um, I just find it interesting that his shape is similar to one of the shapes that they're that they're releasing here. Um, so is there something to this? I, you know, I, I, I don't know. So if you have information on this, I, I'd love to I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on it. I'd love to hear, uh, you know, your other sources. I don't think that this has been peer reviewed at this point in time. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but if anybody could find any more information, I have the PDF uh, you know, that, that, uh, that was published in the journal. So I am looking at that. I'm looking at all these entities. Um, it, you know, and I have the press release, but that's, that's all I have at this, at this point in time. So more information is needed. I'm going to reach out to the corporation this week and see if they can give me any more information on this. Because again, personally and selfishly, this would be huge for my research, but I also don't want to put out something that, um, you know, is not, is not credible, but I am excited about this possibility and I hope that you are too. And whether or not this ends up being legitimized or, uh, is some, is some kind of hoax or something else that doesn't mean that we give up hope in our search. There's a lot of distractions out there. There's a lot of, uh, false paths and dead ends that we tend to walk down, but I, I have come across enough information where I'm confident publicly talking about this stuff saying, Hey, there is more to, to us than we realize. And there's something else out there that is going on. And, um, food for the archons, I think presents that quite well. It makes a very strong argument, um, you know, for people out there to understand, Hey, there's more to us and there's something we can do about it. Um, you know, so I, again, just check out this article in the service change.com show notes and, and, and let's see where, where we go with this, uh, you know, and, and check your newsletters. Uh, I'll have more information and updates available that will be coming your way to discuss this further. So I'm going to go ahead and end the show here. Uh, again, fascinating subject. I hope that if you have more information on this, please reach out to me. There's a contact form, a contact page at servicechange.com. There's also one on the left-hand side of your show notes, um, you know, for, for, the, uh, for this particular episode. Just send me a thought, send me your, you know, whatever. Respond to the newsletter. Just hit the reply button. Uh, I love getting responses. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know if you have any other information on this so you can verify this because, again, I think this can be pretty significant. If the fact that we're able to see stuff that's invisible, whether it's the entities that I'm talking about or whether these are just blobs of light that exist through antimatter, uh, I don't know. But I want to hear your thoughts on it. I want to hear, um, you know, any other way to confirm or deny this this scientific data. And I'll do my due diligence over the upcoming weeks as well. So, uh, again, I'm Dennis Nappy II. This has been the Seeker Podcast with Service of Change, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning and keep an open mind. Thank you. Seekers.